Can you hear me and see me? <laughs> Please let me know. Oh my lord. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. I um, did the update yesterday, checked everything and it was all working fine and then today when I hit go live it just said the drivers for the new update weren't working so I had to go in and um, update them. And of course you're right, they always take longer when you need them straight away but I'm here and I'm so glad you're all here with me. So we're going to be doing some colouring again today. Um, be sure to click on the like button if you, um, and also share if you want to kind of share this out with people. We'll get as many people here as we can. Also in the chat, uh, in the top part of the chat, apparently if you click on the one that says live chat, not top chat, then you'll get um, to see everything that's going on. I think I've only just worked that one out myself, but. Hey, I thought I'd share that with you too. <laughs> but thank you. And thanks for all the thumbs up already. You guys are amazing. So I'm going to turn my camera on. Because in all that excitement, I did get a little bit behind. And that will stop moving shortly. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Now, did you see which set I'm going to be using today? This is, I think it's actually the first, from memory, I think it's the first Builder Garden set that Altenew have um, released. So I have used it a couple of times in the past, but um, we've done a few different kinds of colouring. We did the alcohol markers and then we did water colouring last time. I thought I'd go on to the next one, which people were really interested in getting some tips on, which is ink blending, because ink blending, um, the stencils are pretty new to us really, but hey, you can get some amazing results and not be a colourist at all, seriously. You can really get some incredible, I mean, it was like when layered stamping first came to our world. <laughs> <laughs> but this, um, there's so many companies and so many different um, choices out there. You might already have like a stamp set um, with uh, coordinating stencils that you can ink blend with. So you can try these techniques and tips with that as well. But also um, I've got one from Altenew that's, uh, and Pink Fresh they do them as well, like heat embossing, heat embossing, what am I saying? Hot foiling with layering stencils so there's lots of different options out there so this is absolutely beautiful it's a weird little um branch though because i think both the flowers are different they maybe they've been um grafted <laughs> so i was just going to show you kind of the size of it like it, this is the regular size misty and it nearly fits the whole of the card stock so this piece of card here it's half an American size a US size A4 so um, what's that four and a quarter is eight and a half by 11 inches so it, it fits in here but just <laughs> so I'm just stamping it out with some pigment ink and what I like to do is I'll uh, leave my uh, Tracy if it's blurry I maybe just look at your settings or reboot it could be that your um, connection has put you to the lowest speed um, like upload speed so and I like to leave the stamp in place so that I can uh, restamp it after if I want to so isn't that, it's really pretty. And I actually um, put this out of the road. I had pre-stamped this because I'm stamping it in pigment ink. I do like to wait just a couple of minutes for the ink to um, set, dry. You can hit it with your heat tool. Um, it, it doesn't really matter or I just leave it for a couple of minutes and it's usually fine 
So the this particular set of stencils is an older set. I don't know if you've noticed, but the newer sets of stencils from Alter New, the layering ones, come with a guide on the inside. But they always have guides at their shop as well. But they are numbered up in the corner. So this is, and that just tells you which is the front. So that's the first stencil. You can do it um, in whatever order you want. You can do as many or as few layers as you want as well. But um, if you're not sure, a good way to start is to look at the numbers. And that actually tells me which way I need to face the stencil. Because <laughs> sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. So um, this one isn't too bad, but one of my tips is to be gentle on your stencils. So you might be able to see this section here. They are quite intricate, some of these plastic pieces. So do be aware that um, not to rub against the actual plastic or bend them. And when I'm wiping them down after, I find that's probably when I'm most likely to bend them. Just be a, um, a little bit gentle with them there. So I just thought it'd be fun to do some, create like a purple floral design. So I've got the Shades of Purple set and I like to start typically with the lightest colours and build up. Something like this, it doesn't really matter. Try not to get too hung up on where shades and shadows and things are. So literally I'll start with the light and most of the stencils work this way. As you get the layers through, they're going to get darker and darker because the smaller sections typically are going to be the uh, ones with the shading and the shadow in the intricate, like in the portions of the flower. So we'll start on this flower here. I've got three different kinds of stencils that I will normally use. Stencils. And when I say stencils, I mean <laughs> brushes. See, I'm all out of sorts now. And I was so organized today. <laughs> I have, um, you can use whatever brushes you have. But I'm going to use my Ulta New ones today. This large one, you've probably seen me use this before. If I'm doing a bigger area, this is the one I'll go for. And I will even use this on smaller sections as well. I am becoming more familiar with these smaller brushes here and finding them. I don't have to mask off so much. But when it comes to the smallest areas, then I will use these detailed blending brushes, which are awesome. Um, you might have other brushes. Just let me grab one. Um, look, I've got the... These are the life-changing blender brushes, which are beautiful to use as well. But I find um, one of my tips is to use... If you keep kind of using the same product, like the same kind of brush, you will get used to it and you'll get better results overall. I um, just found that these particular brushes worked the best for me. I don't have a brush for every family and you don't need them. So I tend to have like, these are the four <laughs> colors that I typically will use. So I have like a blue, a pink, a green and like a yellow brush. And I'll use the blue one for purples and maybe grays as well and the orange one I'll use for browns as well. But if you're finding that you're getting um, like muddy results, you either need to clean your brush that little bit more or it might be worth getting uh, an extra brush just to make your life a little bit easier. But you can start with one or two and just see if you like them first, because you might, you might find that there's, this style of brush is not for you. Um, oh yeah, that does go on there. So I just chose one section of this image, and you can see it, they are really easy to line up. Because I've stamped this in black, it's even easier to see. And I'm just tapping my brush onto the ink pad and then rubbing it over the section. Now this is a dye ink, 
so it will dry out smoother than it goes on. So if you do have any questions, can you type um, question in capital letters just so um, <laughs> I can see them. I think I'm just that sometimes it all goes through so quickly that um, I miss and I don't want to miss your questions. I do read them after so I will reply in the comments or try and find email you if you do have a specific question that you want me to answer. Okay so when it comes to cleaning my brushes I don't wash them. Does anyone here wash their brushes? <laughs> I'm really lazy. I literally just have a piece of paper towel beside me and rub the brush till it's clean and then I'll go ahead and use it for the next colour or the next darker colour. Yeah, no, I don't wash them either, Cordelia. <laughs> I'm too lazy. Um, so you could go, because these are just going to give you different sections of the flower, I'm... Um, really easy to line this one up. I'm going to go for the next colour which is the hydrangea. So did anyone have a go at watercolouring after last the last live? I'd like to know. I, I know a couple of you were going to try the um, embossed version which is um, a really good way to get some confidence with moving colour around on the cardstock but I'd like to know if you got any good tips out of that one. Oh that's pretty cool. I'm going to try not to smudge my work. <laughs> and this is um, there's a lot in this flower I've got to say. thinking about going lighter again. I've got this other colour here. I haven't tried this one. It looks more blue. Maybe the pinky colour might be better. These are the new, um, oh they're not new. They're not new. They're new to me. These are the new, um, oh that's pretty. What are they called? They're like, um, might be written on it. Frozen Delights, that's it. They've been out for a little while from Alternu, but they're like a set of um, pastel colours. Yeah, Kathleen, I, I just think it's easier to not wash them because it, it's, I imagine it's like having um, the bristles of a like a water brush and you're not meant to get water up into the the section where it's all held together. I can't imagine it would be that good for it to do it that often anyway but if you've got them really um, messy might be worth it. Some people have two sets two sets of brushes I should say this loosely. Some people have a lot of brushes but they might have one for the lighter colours and then one for the bolder colours the other thing is not to mix up your dye inks and pigment inks on your brushes either. They're not happy. So if you do use a lot of pigment inks, I would say um, to get, like have a set or have a couple of brushes set aside just for the pigment inks. Um, well, this is going to be the most interesting flower. <laughs> Looks like a hot mess right now, but I promise it will all come together. Now, this is where I start to get a bit. I haven't done that one. Yes, I have done that one, Therese. Focus. Talking too much. They'd never feel guilty about not cleaning. Oh, I've had to, I've got visitors tonight, um, unexpected visitors, but like probably 
you know, your closest friends, some of your closest friends, and you just go, yeah, yeah, I'd love to see you. But then I had to, speaking of cleaning, <laughs> guess what I've been doing this morning? <laughs> so I was running around doing that, and then the computer decides to play up on me. You might have seen um, another trick. I'm not going to do it today because we're keeping this really simple. Another trick is to um, lay a colour in these. And I've got a video where I actually used this particular set. And um, did some, added some depth by layering colour. I think I used the detail blending brushes from memory. Now I'm hoping this colour is going to bring it all together. So this is the final... Yes, Kathleen, I've heard that that's a lot of people actually are doing that. They're keeping... So you're not having to clean them off so much, especially if you're doing... There's a lot of people... I've got a good friend of mine and she's just in love with everything um, blended through the stencils. She was a um, beautiful card maker. I think, and just being able to get some really unique looks. Like if I coloured this flower with my markers or with um, watercolours, anything like that, I would never have these multiple colours together. I would never think to do that. I'm too rigid in the way I think. <laughs> So this is just a really good way for me just to relax and play with colours and just get a totally different look out of a stamp set that I could easily turn around and colour with my markers or with some paints. And that's another tip too, if you really don't have the confidence to choose colours, especially colours that um, are quite different to each other. Companies like Altenew uh, have um, sell their colours in blends, like so there'll be four in a pack, and so you know those four colours are going to look awesome together. So you don't have to worry about what to put with what. The other thing is, there's a lot of. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of people out uh, on the web who've created combinations of colours, so like all the Catherine Puller inks and things. Like if you just Google combinations of Catherine Puller colours for layering, I'm sure you'll find some great stuff there. Roberta, I've heard that the oxides um, don't play nicely. I think they're more, because they've got the pigment like within them. Watch me, I'm going to get ink everywhere here. Because they've got um, the pigment ink, like a mixture of pigment and dye is my understanding. I might be totally wrong there. You might know. Let me know. Then um, while I'm doing the purple, I'm going to do the other flower. So I did that like in a matter of seconds. I did all five layers of that flower. Now this one... I do this every time. I have to think. <laughs> and this is how I do it, literally. I just, you know what will happen? I face it the right way will help. <laughs> what do you think? We'll do that. Oh, did I grab the right one yet? Yeah. Whoops. Hysteria. Now I was talking about something. <laughs> oh, the oxide inks. I only bought a few of those, just more to give them a try. I like the chalky texture of them, but I, I typically don't use my Distress inks very much, but there's a few colours that were my go-to. 
So they were the ones that I bought when I cat fur. Um, when I bought the oxides, I actually did that. I specifically just bought the colours that were my go-to in the Distress Inks. I like all the colours, I just never used them. Does that make sense? They weren't my go-to colours, so I always picked the same ones um, every time. I'll go for the light one first. Just so I don't have to clean my brush so much. I think it's a bit gentler on your hand if you have the long handle brushes, Kathleen, and you can get a, a more even result. Um, so if you want a darker look, like a, you can hold it closer to the actual bristles, but if you want to get a smoother look, you can hold it back. And they're quite flexible, these ones. And the next one was a hydrangea. And that was that, that one there. She worked it out. <laughs> Takes a while, gotta say. Okay, what other tips have I got for you? If you're not getting a smooth result, I know the only time I could get a smooth blended result was on Bristol Smooth cardstock and if I use the Distress Inks. But now that, uh, in particular for me, you just have to find out what works for you. Um, once Alton you brought these ones out, I could actually get a good result. And now I'm getting used to these too. I'm enjoying not having to mask everything off. It's much quicker. Did I get some greens out? I think I did. Going for the old school frayed leaf. <laughs> now was there another layer to that? I don't think there was. They're all leaves from memory. I do um, find this a really easy way to add colour. So if you're not getting a good result, like I was saying, maybe try a different brush. But I would start by trying a different cardstock because you've probably got a couple of types of cardstock that you can try already in your stash without having to spend money on another brush. Oh, Michelle! <laughs> we did miss you. You missed the fun at the beginning again. <laughs> Don't even go there. I'm so happy you all stayed. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. Okay. So I would, if you want to sort of cheat, go straight for the Bristol Smooth, but it's an expensive way just to get blended cardstock, <laughs> but you know it's going to work. It's just not quite the same white as, um, it's the evergreen, this last one. But it's just not the same white that you're going to get with like the Nina. I mean, you know how much we love the matchy matchies. Okay, how are we going? <laughs> going good. Um, so I just grab my chamois cloth and just wipe away the excess ink. The, because I don't, I know I'm going to keep using this piece around there. I don't want to accidentally. Um, contaminate the rest of the paper. Contaminate? I know I'm going to get it on my hands. <laughs> Smudge the paper I should say. Okay. Uh, we 
where did I put this? Still got the dark on there. Oh yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I um, OBS Studio, that's the streaming software that I use, had a big update. So I checked everything yesterday and did the update, did everything, and then when I went to use it today, it, the new update wasn't compatible with my old driver. And you know, it all is gobbledygook. <laughs> to me <laughs> but I worked it out and we got there now I think these could be a bit darker I do have to say using these smaller brushes does take that little bit of extra time but this is what I do to relax <laughs> And I've been doing um, quite a bit of video editing lately, so I haven't had as much to share at my um, channel, at my YouTube channel. But I have got a lot of new cards up on my blog. So if you only follow me at YouTube and you want to see some inspiration, I don't make a video for every for every card that I create, I just, I'd love to, but the time just isn't there. So I um, actually have quite a few new cards at my blog. And did you see my, um, let's make sure I've got it facing the right way. Did you see that I got my, yeah, yeah, yeah. finally got my craft room tour up. Who watched it? <laughs> That was hilarious. I was um, filmed it when I was six, so it was months ago, and I finally got it edited. I was so excited. It just takes time, and I hadn't had that time, but it was so cool because it's been it had been like four years since I'd, and it was quite a bit. I was a bit surprised overall. It hadn't changed my craft room. It was still basically the same, but. What I do in my craft room now is a bit different. So things like, I use my blending tools all the time. So I've had to sort of rearrange things. I use the hot foil system all the time. So that's right beside me now. Whereas before, you know, my, all my stuff was sort of, I'd have to get up. It was like a event to go and get it <laughs> and start using it. I'm going to make this one a bit darker because it's hanging down beneath the others. It's the theory. Oh, yeah, it's not tidy all the time. <laughs> I had just, um, the opportunity was I'd cleaned out my craft room and I thought it was a good time just to go ahead and, um, so I'm not worried that that's not, smooth yet because it will smoothen out smoothen that's a word that's today's new word smoothen <laughs> man I like to make up my own words so I I thought it was a good opportunity because I just cleaned the room out I would actually I might as well film where everything was became <laughs> where it ended up I should say I do typically work in a tidy crowd. I can't think. I don't know if, if it's too messy. I can't think. I can't. I, I, I struggle to create in if it's like my brain's messy too. I like to do sort of ideally what I like to do is do one full card, pack everything away and then start again. So see how this has got the thinner bits of um, plastic? I'm kind of bringing the ink in. Now, 
because I'm working probably the ink that's underneath will still be a little bit wet it will dry lighter so if you want a bolder look you can always come back in and add another layer of ink over top or use a darker ink than what you think you need it's a pretty fun stamp set this one stamp and it's not the usual sort of um, style of stencil. Most stencils build up and give you a, a more realistic look. This one's a little bit quirky I think. That's, I think that's why I like it. How are we going for time? We did start a bit late. <laughs> um, it is an Australian word. <laughs> now. <laughs> it wasn't, but now it is. Wow. This green is so dark. I always noticed, like, for some reason, Alton knew had um it will dry lighter promise and smoothen out <laughs> this green was always a bit unusual for me like i thought that um with this set of three it always seemed a bit too dark but over the time i've gotten used to it that we all see how much that lightens. I might need to do a couple more dark ones. Um, I'm just making sure that the um, black outline of the where I've stamped the image is kind of on the inside of the stencil. Notice not all stencils are created perfectly. If you're finding that you're getting a, a halo, you know, the stencil is just that little bit bigger than what the stamped image is. If you haven't stuck your stencil down, what you can do is actually um, just move it across slightly while you're doing that section and then um, move it back for the other section. But I don't really, um, I'm trying not to get caught up in that too much. My mum, even after I've had that happen on one of my stencils fairly recently, I just die cut it out and to be honest, after I'd done that, I really didn't even notice that it, that it had happened. But when I was doing it, when I was actually blending over the stencil, it really bothered me. But that's how I got around it when I used it the next time. I'm just taking my stencil away and wiping it on some scrap paper at the moment. That's what I'm doing. You're not missing out on anything exciting there. <laughs> this one needs to be lighter. All right. Oh, the other thing I was saying, you know how I said if you're not getting good results, the other thing you can do is actually try a different ink. If you've got a couple of different kinds of ink, like um, say you've got the dye inks and that's not working, you could try pigment inks for blending. You could try a different brand of ink, like um, maybe try a Catherine Puller one or um, if you have the distress inks which a lot of people do uh, they are very good for blending they're just a little bit more forgiving they're like a wetter ink is Tom going to make a card Michelle? <laughs> Is he watching so he can make a card? Wow, it's really interesting colours today, Therese. <laughs> uh, that's 
it's all fun. Now I want some. Some of this, that's all branch. I know that there's a couple more layers for these too. I think I'm gonna have to go darker on those other ones. It looks too dark. Oh, good on him. <laughs> Oh, I forgot this. This is a clever thing about this particular stencil is that multiples line up at the same time. Nearly there got the branch to do. I'm kind of feeling like I need that to be a bit darker. Whether I do that with I think it needs to be that again doesn't it? I could bring in another green that would be fun. I'll just try an extra layer of this um, forest glades. That's what I was saying before. I was a bit, um, it took Altenew a long time to get us like a second set of greens in. They only had this one, they had a lot of blues and pinks and um, I was ever so excited when they brought in the, I think it might have been the tropical forest one was the next was the next one. But they've got a few quite a few now. But um for, for florals I would have thought that they would have had a lot more earlier on. That looks better, doesn't it? comes to inks. That's a good idea Roberta. Use the refills and um, use the ink from the refills on a mat and pick it up with your brush. I've not done that. That's a really good idea. I'm going to leave that and see how we sit. <laughs> and I thought it'd be fun to go for mm, maybe I'll use that one for the branch this is another one that flowed through from memory yes so see how just holding the stencil in one place I can pretty much do the whole whole branch. You can tape your stencils in place if you're worried about them shifting. I tend not to. You can use products like um, Pixie Spray, which is that light tack adhesive typically because I do the clean and simple designs I don't want to take the chance of leaving residue looks like I've had a pink branch here before <laughs> I don't remember that Maybe it 
this from wiping it. Has anyone got a favourite combination of flowers and stencils? Like, like this sort of thing where you buy a stamp set of a flower and then it has like a layering stencil. Is, um, there's so many now. Like Pink Fresh have some amazing ones. Who else does them? To everyone that we see here regularly, how do we connect outside YouTube? I don't do Facebook. I, I'm on Instagram probably the most. I, I had, um, not a, Facebook isn't the most user friendly. I really struggle on Facebook. I am on there, but I find it really hard to keep track of it. I had, um, had to change my Facebook account a few years ago because I'd done it in my name lost in paper I hadn't done it in my real name they closed my account because it wasn't a real name it wasn't a real person I didn't realize it when I was setting it up that that's what the problem was. <laughs> that was going to be a problem and um, so I lost like I had like 4,000 people with me there so <laughs> I don't know what happened so I had to kind of reboot on Facebook and I lost faith in it at the time. It does make it hard though. But I don't have um, a Facebook group. Maybe I should start a little group for us though. What else could we use other than Facebook then? Yeah, I think Instagram's... We can certainly... I know, look at the grey. <laughs> All right, flowers, centre. What do we do? Well, maybe moon rock. How easy is this? Adding colour and it's... I thought I'd go for this one because it's a real unique kind of <laughs> stamp and stamp. Real unique. This gives that totally different look. And the other thing I'll often do is actually come back in with a pencil and add some extra layers as well. That I'd never colour it like that ever. <laughs> It's a little bit different, I'll give it that, but I was playing with some colours earlier. I'll show you. So I told you I was playing while I was waiting. I was using some of those pastel-y colours and I was mixing up some oranges and pinks. So you could really go anywhere with with this. What I thought I might do, because this Builder Garden set has a massive die. Look at the size of that. <laughs> what I thought I might do is do a partial die cut. I'm not sure if you can see this. On here. And I'll pay it. I have a pencil somewhere. I'm just going to make a mark on the back because I like to cut my dies with the side facing up. This is the piece I want to cut off, so I've put an X on there. 
ask me why. <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> I have cut the wrong side before. I had to change the whole game plan for a card. <laughs> and these wicked little plates from Sizzix have like a... Um, they don't have a sharp end on them anymore. They have like a beveled edge on them. So that's a bit annoying. But basically I'm going to put it to that mark. I'm going to make sure it's nice and straight inside my die cutting machine. Just so I get a fairly straight not that it matters, I can always come back in with my scissors. You could do this by hand, you don't need the die for this. And then try not to put my inky fingers all over <laughs> this. You can either use a craft knife and a ruler. I've got um, my Fiskars trimmer with it. It's got a guide wire in it so I can see exactly where my die cut to. And then I can just use that. And that, and I'll just use my scissors to cut that other little portion away. So, Michelle, do you recognise where I'm going with this card? Because this is your idea, your fault, totally. <laughs> you can cut it in half and make two cards. I've done that with this image before. You could probably get three, because <laughs> you'd want a flower on each, wouldn't you? But, uh, now what is it? Four and a quarter. Just checking my hands. It's the one with the star. So this is the um, Alta New score scoring tool. I'm, just, I'm still getting used to it. It's actually got it's got a metal like you know the old school. Does this tell you how old I am? A metal <laughs> ball in there. So it gives a nice crisp score line. We are Tracy, but maybe you can move up here. We've got lovely weather. can have the front of the card is shaped so when you open the card shaped I often like to do a um, you've probably seen me do it before where I put some black and white striped paper or something in there could put a colored piece of paper I've been loving this set from Alton New lately the sweet sentiment set have you seen so it's it's pretty cool because it's a eh, so they're hot foil plates, but if you're not into or not going to get into the hot foiling, get this set because, <laughs> and use my links, because why not? I really appreciate it, I truly do. Um, you could cut out the thanks in some gold cardstock and have the layering and get the same look. So you can have that without having to have the hot foil machine. I think it's a great idea. Otherwise, if you've got the hot foil, you can do that and then use this outline die to cut it out. How cool is that? I don't think that's gonna work though now that I've cut the whole thing, but I did cut some black ones out. I was thinking while I was waiting and then I realized I was not actually going to be early because I had to update the driver. <laughs> I thought I'll... Um, I thought the black might look nice. Although, 
And what I've started doing now is I've actually, I don't know, what do you think? The black one or the gold? I'm kind of heading towards the gold now. But what I've started doing is actually doing multiple sentiments to so say if I'm going to hop for one sentiment because I never ever did I always just did what I needed um, now I'm doing like the whole I'll do all of it at once and then I'll have black black yep yeah, okay black black <laughs> black wins thank you <laughs> thanks for your help I do need that a lot lately and just use See, I've been using this a lot, this one too, so make sure I've got some dots under there. This is uh, Sticky Specs. Sticky Dots is another thing that you can get, which is a very similar thing. Amazing for um, vellum. I'm just trying to pull it off. It's such an intricate dye. I'm going to go between this and the matte medium at the moment. Just give a little bit of the, I think the other one might be better like the sticky dots one. It's a, the sticky dots one is a thermoweb one. Has anyone tried that one? I imagine it's much the same. Is that really crooked? <laughs> I've used my, my tweezers that I keep for non-sticky stuff too. So they shouldn't be sticky. A lot of people use those Zyron sticker makers. I've never, um, I've never actually bought one, tried them. I've heard mixed results, but then recently I've heard if you do put a lot of pressure, then you don't have trouble with the gumming at the side. I just thought I'd have a look and see. I'm going to think on this though. Does that bring it to life? I'm wondering. I just thought I was going to play with that. Because typically what I do, oh yeah, I got one out. I forgot I did that. As I'll add something like this in behind it. Yeah. Hold that there. But is that so yesterday? <laughs> and the other thing I thought about was, it's a, you never go wrong with the black and white. Have you seen this one? has like all the alternate colors but they're kind of ombre that's a different color isn't it maybe it's that one that looks kind of pretty doesn't it because it brings in the two I think some people have just got the knack with those Zyrons and others don't I'm putting myself in the other category and I've never even tried them yet. <laughs> Not a bad thing. I don't know if you've used this paper before, but it is um make sure I'm the right side. It's not really good when it comes to things like the ATG tape because it's a shiny thick cardstock, these cardstocks from Altenew. So I typically won't grab out my AT. Oh look at that ink. Probably all over my card. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, hello everyone. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got through all my tips. If not, I'm going to put them like I did last time. I just added the whole section on my blog. Um, I really love it when you guys visit me there. It's like my home. So I'll probably do the same thing. I'll write all the tips. So that they're there for you to access whatever you want. I'll also do... How cool is that? See, Michelle? You gave me that idea. That's your fault. It's pretty much all Alta New stuff, this one, isn't it? I've got an Alta New stamp. It's old school wood block. And it's crooked. It's I usually twist it. What do you think? Do you like it? I do. Now, what do I want? I'll just close it down so it looks better. Have I forgotten anything? <laughs> it's just a little bit um, different for the stencils because a lot of the stencils actually like I say give you that more realistic look on a flower but this one's just a little bit quirky and fun and I like it when you can do multiple different colors and stuff as well so oh, cool Deb thank you for joining me at my tour <laughs> you really do need a cup of tea or a glass of wine for that I think it's like 20 minutes my videos don't normally go for that long unless they're alive but thank you very much. Any questions about um, any techniques today of the stencils? If you do and I haven't answered them, please. Oh, see Natasha, old school, black and white. I like it too. I still do that one all the time. Um, then just pop them in the comments below. Visit me at my blog. I will put up as many tips as I can think of in the post once I get photos taken. I'll share it there and I'll also share it over Instagram. I need to think about where we can create a group for ourselves. It can be a little bit hard if it's not Facebook. Just saying it is. Um, Facebook's probably the easiest place to create a group. Uh, you can make yourself private on Facebook so that no one knows that you're there but I totally understand uh, it's not my friend not after what happened to me <laughs> but I'm happy to give it a whirl if that's what people want to do or if anyone knows of any other platform we could use I'll, I'll give that a try too oh I'm so excited about your butterflies I, I love seeing the photos of them too so keep sharing those please Michelle but yes, definitely stalk me on Instagram. I'm there probably second to my blog and here at YouTube. Instagram's my other main platform. Oh, Bob, thank you. Thanks for joining me. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're well. <laughs> and um, any comments? I truly appreciate you taking your time out of your day and spending it here with me. If you did like today's technique and video, please click on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I appreciate that too. I have put all the links for the products that I've used below. So if you do choose to go shopping, you don't have to buy these specific products. You can just click on one of my links to the shops that I put in the links. Not all of them are affiliate links. I, I am not affiliated with um, everyone. Just I'll try and put in the links what I can find for you. But if I have an affiliate and you click through it, um, then I do get a small portion of the sale at no extra cost to you. So I put that towards um, buying new drivers <laughs> for my programs. No, they're free, but everything else is not. No. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you enjoyed the card. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea now. <laughs> next time oh, oh I will be back my plan is the 29th of September for another live I would um, love any ideas if you've got anything that you specifically want to see me do or talk about a little bit more or give you some more ideas on I um, would um, really appreciate any ideas and I'll definitely give them a try so. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks. I'll see you on the 29th of September at the same time. It'll be the day before in Europe and over in the US it'll be the 28th. But I will email out on my email list before then. So if you're not on my email, email list, do go to my blog and sign up for my floral freebie and you will automatically be added to my um, email list and you'll find out when I'm going live. The only thing that might change that if my dad has surgery and I do head south, but I haven't heard anything there yet. So thanks again, everyone. I'm so happy you joined me. Till next time. Happy paper crafting. Bye.